Real wisdom is the world. That is life. And uh, now, 50 years later, the world obviously is lacking only one thing, and that is wisdom. And what would I be if I wasn't a rabbi? Mm, a carpenter. Yeah, I said carpenter. <laughs> I like I like working with you know with wood. But um, I was not encouraged in that direction at all. I was encouraged as a teenager by the idea of changing the world with ideas. That wisdom can actually change the world. Um, Real wisdom doesn't, doesn't take you into a special place where you become a specialized kind of a human being. Real wisdom is the world. That is life. And uh, now, 50 years later, the world obviously is lacking only one thing, and that is wisdom. We have everything else in abundance. So the Rebbe challenged us, go out and make a difference, and your weapon is the teachings of Hasidus, the wisdom. And uh, anybody who knows anything about the Jewish world knows that that was an amazingly successful project. In fact, it spread way beyond the Jewish world, right? I mean, many of your readers are probably Chinese. <laughs> so when we started Beis Chana, a program for adult women who didn't have a Jewish uh, education, this was back in 1970, so we sent out a flyer to six campuses in the Midwest, inviting students to spend their vacation time studying. And I don't remember exactly the wording, but it's close. It said something about come spend some time discovering the purpose of life or the meaning of life. And 18 women showed up And they were uh, more than curious. They were skeptical. And they said, you know the meaning of life? Nobody knows the meaning of life. So they came to find out. And they, and they did find out the meaning of life. And that was the beginning of a 50-year project, still going strong of people who want to know the meaning of life. I mean, who, who doesn't? Some people are conscious of their desire to find the meaning, and some are just suffering from the lack of meaning without realizing that that's their only problem. So, making, creating a life that matters has been going on for 50 years. So most of the information, most of the ideas that Rivka fell in love with was practiced for 50 years on women from all over the world of all ages and all backgrounds. And uh, it, it works. It works in real life. So hopefully the book will take it a giant step you know, farther because you never know where a book ends up. When I started to teach at Beis Chana, all these uh, college women, and I had never spoken to a woman before I met my wife, it was, it was quite a shock. But it turns out that Torah is really the fount of, of all serious wisdom. 
and even on a subject as popular and as worldly as intimacy, the Torah has a real take on the subject that the secular world has missed completely. And the proof of it is the Me Too movement. Something is seriously wrong with sophisticated, intelligent, liberated people who should be the most comfortable, the most sexually content of all generations because it's so open and it's so free and it's, you know, not like our grandparents who blushed at the, at the very mention of the word. And yet, it's not happening. There's a lot of confusion. There's a lot of pain. I mean, you know what's going on. Intimacy. Who can talk about that? We don't even know what male means. Or who is female. So I got to tell you this little story. True story. I was speaking for a group of Israeli newly elected members of, of uh, the Knesset, junior members. And they come to America to get to know American Jewry. So every year they have a, conserv a reform rabbi, a conservative rabbi, an orthodox rabbi, and a Hasidic rabbi to educate these people about Judaism in America. That year I happened to be the Hasidic rabbi. And they were all talking about Jewish continuity. With all sorts of plans and... Anyway, so when I spoke, I said, we're here to discuss Jewish continuity. Continuity means you continue what was before. So Jewish continuity means you do what your grandfather did, what his grandfather did, and what his grandfather did. Don't make up new experiments. Continue the tradition. The reform rabbi got very upset. And she said, why are you ignoring half of the population? So what, what did I say that was ignoring? You said grandfather. Why didn't you say grandmother? So I said, you know, you're, you're really behind the times. My grandfather was a woman. <laughs> How can you assume that just because he was my grandfather that he identified as a man? I thought she would laugh. She didn't. She took it seriously. <laughs> like, yeah, good point. No, not good point. <laughs> Insanity. This is what this is what's going on. So I mean, talk talk to people who don't know the difference between male and female, a grandfather and a grandmother, and you talk to them about intimacy. How did we get so fablungit? So yeah, it's the things we need wisdom for are surprising. Everybody thinks you need to talk about spiritual things and, and, you know, what happens when you die, which is also in the book. But nobody expects things as fundamental as eating like a mensch, being intimate like a mensch, raising your kids like a mensch. I mean, just your everyday... We need wisdom for everyday life. For ordinary things, there is wisdom. And then life is full. Life is meaningful. It matters. If you enjoyed this conversation or this topic and you're looking for more information or you want to hear it again from another angle, there is a way to do that. And that is in this book. It's all there. Order it from Amazon. You can read it, reread it, and share it. We have a Sunday night program for VIPs that you might be interested in. 
it's informal, it's questions and answers, it's conversation. It's really relaxed, it's really pleasant, enjoyable, informative, and uh, kind of community-like. It's a Sunday night program. There's a um, Wednesday morning program for the VIPs, and there's a Wednesday night program. All of it, just conversation, casual, laid back, unscripted. So join us, take a look, click uh, the link below and see which, which of the three suits you best and join us for some enjoyable conversation.